Now that Saddam is in U.S. custody, what happens next? We have the latest on this historic day. Local families of troops in Iraq tell us how they think Saddam's capture will affect the war. And another Northwest woman outplays, outwits, and outlasts everyone on Survivor. Point Six News at 11 starts now. Now, with Cam Body, this is Coin Six News at 11. Tonight, trapped like a rat, U.S. troops find and corner ousted Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein, and they find him alive. Now people from Portland and all over the world react to the news. Good evening, I'm Ken Boddy. Welcome to Coin 6 News at 11. Well, tonight, U.S. officials say Saddam Hussein has been removed from Iraq. Where he is remains a secret. There are reports that during early questioning, he was not being cooperative. And one Iraqi official who met with him in captivity says he's also unapologetic. Stacy Case has the latest. Saddam Hussein has been taken out of Iraq, says a U.S. official. His exact whereabouts, unknown. But the endless interrogations have already begun. He emerged this weekend from a dank hole, unshaven, unkempt, with all nine months on the run etched into his tired face. He was just caught like a rat. Without a single shot fired. Soldiers from the 4th Infantry Division found Saddam in a coffin-sized bunker on a farm near his hometown of Tikrit, ironically near some of his opulent palaces. DNA confirmed it. U.S. officials ecstatically announced it. One of the most intensive manhunts in history is over. A hopeful day has arrived. Saddam's hiding hole was covered with a styrofoam lid and outfitted with a breathing tube. He was found with a gun and more than 700,000 U.S. dollars. He blinked and rubbed his matted beard as doctors examined him. The capture of this man was crucial to the rise of a free Iraq. U.S. officials say family members and close friends of Saddam blew his cover. Over the last 10 days or so, we brought in about 5 to 10 members of these families who then were able to give us even more information. <laughs> Iraqis danced in the streets and fired traditional celebratory gunshots into the air. But the administration is quick to caution. Saddam's capture may not stop the bloodletting that's taken nearly 200 American lives since the end of the war. The U.S. hasn't decided what to do with Saddam. The Iraqi Governing Council wants to have a public trial at home before a special tribunal. Stacy Case, CBS News, Washington. Family members of a Portland Marine say they never thought this day would come. Lance Corporal Richard Groh is just in Saddam's hometown of Tikrit. Groh is back in the U.S. and getting married this month. And as Amy Morrow reports, today his family had extra reason to celebrate. And look, I didn't break the ribbon. <laughs> On the day of Heather Berry's bridal shower. Wow, I'm going to cry. She and her mother-in-law-to-be got a gift they didn't expect. Oh, I was very excited. Very excited they finally caught him. Hey, on my, the day of my Mido shower, Saddam Hussein's caught. It was Heather who told her fiancé, Marine Lance Corporal Richard Grow, that Saddam was caught. He ran around the barracks telling everybody it was so hilarious. He was, it's the best news they've had since this whole thing started. In October, Richard came home from the Middle East. He's now at a Marine base in California, waiting to go back to Iraq next year. His mom worries that even with Saddam out of the picture, Richard might not be safe. It's a good thing that they did catch him, but there's still people out there that are dedicated to Saddam that are going to make a point that they're, you know, not happy that he's been caught. So, there, you know, there could be extensive bombing. But she believes this may be the beginning of the end for the U.S. mission in Iraq. Heather isn't as sure. The, the war is still not over. We still have to help them resettle all their people and get that all done and catching Saddam had nothing to do with it. For now though she isn't thinking about the news of the day. She's getting married in two weeks to her high school sweetheart and that's the best reason to celebrate. <laughs> Amy Morrow, Point Six News. Heather says the only thing her fiance regrets is that he wasn't the one to catch Saddam Hussein. Iraqi expatriates living in Portland celebrated news of Hussein's capture, among them a limousine driver who called this one of the best days of his life. Coin Six's Ray Summers rode with him. Good morning, Mohammed. 
Mohammed Al Shamari took his business calls, drove clients to the airport. They keep talking about the situation. Now including Saddam Hussein. So but listen to the radio. His family in Iraq called in the middle of the night. They said, Mohammed, Saddam Hussein, they found him. Okay? Turn your TV on. Obviously, I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep. All night, I never sleep. Saddam Hussein? He has a broad range of rights as a prisoner of war. For this town car driver, it was the best possible news. He left Iraq in Today, the 90s. Brother, I lost my brother because of Saddam Hussein. I lost my best friends, Saddam Hussein. Neighbors, everybody has problems. Mohammed al Shamari has strong feelings. I never see the uh, devil in my life, but I think... And I told my family, this is the devil. Half a world away, he celebrates. The devil is in custody. This is the end for the big game for him, I'm sure. Feelings obvious. Very happy. Very happy because it's bad a dream for 35 years and the chest of Iraqi people goes away. He doesn't want Saddam Hussein killed, wants him as an example for other world leaders. So this is good lesson. This is good slap their face anyone bad okay their end is gonna be like saddam hussein this is a special day today is the the best holiday okay because i told you no more um evil the future looks good i'm sure Iraq, he will live great ray summers coin six news Mohammed says he hopes for democracy in Iraq, but he thinks that will take a while because of the different political factions in his country. Local reaction to Saddam's capture seems positive, but the question of Iraq's future and America's involvement there still lingers. It's good news. I hope this it makes the war end quickly, you know, bring our guys home. And, uh, you know, I don't like war, and uh, if this makes it happen faster, then that's, that's good news. Well, I'm glad they caught him. I'm not sure it's going to do any good because I think he has a lot of followers. Timing-wise, I think it's probably good news for everybody that's over there. And that's what I think about is just the families. Um, I, th I think about the Iraqi families, too. I just I hope that this makes us that much closer to having a peaceful resolution of this. And the Democratic candidates for U.S. president are weighing in on the capture of Saddam Hussein. They have different views on how Saddam should be brought to justice and how the situation in Iraq should now be handled. This is a real opportunity to internationalize the effort in Iraq. And I urge the president to use this extraordinary opportunity to reach out to the United Nations again, uh, to NATO, to other countries, to bring in... Uh, troops from other countries to replace our troops so we may begin to bring ours home. I believe that the capture of Saddam Hussein is helpful and it's a great moment, but it's a moment. And it is not the central part of the war on terror. My first question about where he's uh, going to be tried will be answered by whether that tribunal can execute him, which is what he surely deserves. And uh, if, it, if it can be done by the Iraqi military tribunal, Fine, but if it cannot, he should be brought before an American military tribunal and face the death that he's brought to hundreds of thousands of his own people and uh, 460 plus Americans. This was one of the steps that had to be taken, and that's why I congratulate the men and women for it. I want our country to succeed, but that doesn't change the fact that we began a war that, in my view, wasn't necessary went to war because we said we knew there were weapons, not that we wanted to capture and interview him to see if there was weapons. And again, I would think someone as ruthless as Hussein in an interview is not going to give up much. If he does, all well and good. That does not justify the military action. Hopefully the, the Saddam loyalists will give up. The violence will stop. Our young people won't be in the face of danger every day, and we can put this country back together. It's the Iraqi people who have suffered and uh, seen the consequences of Saddam's rule over a long period of time. They should be responsible for bringing him to justice. We'll have much more to come. Be sure to keep it here on Coin 6 for continuing coverage of the capture of Saddam. The latest tomorrow morning on Coin 6 News at 5 a.m. Coming up, a trip to find the perfect Christmas tree turns into a struggle for survival for a Northwest family. We have the latest on the rescue. 
and avalanche warnings around the northwest tonight. Randy has more details on the snowy conditions in your forecast first. You're watching Coin 6 News, news that's to the point.